TNF-alpha plays weighty role in insulin resistance. Within just the past few decades, the numbers of overweight individuals have skyrocketed so dramatically that obesity and related health diseases are recognizably becoming worldwide epidemics. Analysis of just the American population indicates that about two-thirds of all individuals is overweight or obese. Because obesity is becoming a major public health issue, it is no surprise that even the scientific community has shown much concern. Recent studies have shown that the metabolic effects of this disease have made obesity one of the more prominent risk factors for the development of insulin resistance and, eventually, the onset of diabetes. The core of this issue can be best understood by first recognizing the role that adipose tissue, or body fat, plays in obese individuals. Adipose tissue consists mainly of adipocytes, which are cells specialized for the storage of fat. Fibroblasts, blood vessels, and macrophages can be found in adipose tissues as well. Contrary to popular belief, adipose tissue is a highly active metabolic and endocrine organ. Issues arise, however, when high caloric intakes lead to the rapid accumulation of fatty acids and adipocytes. When adipocytes exceed their maximum storage capacities, they enter inflammatory states. Because the adipose tissue is inflamed and can no longer appropriately store lipids, there is a resulting buildup of fat storage in neighboring non-adipose tissue. This unfortunately triggers a cascade that eventually leads to the disruption of insulin signaling. It all begins when the infiltration of lipids in non-adipose tissue causes adipocytes to secrete monocyte chemoattractant protein 1. This protein enhances the recruitment of macrophages, which are cells whose function is to dispose of enlarged adipocytes. The accumulation of macrophages in the adipose tissue is followed by a rapid accumulation of tumor necrosis factor alpha a protein that is synthesized by both macrophages and adipocytes alike. TNF-alpha consists of three monomers that come together to form a trimer that consists mainly of beta sheets and has been identified to have high structural homology with viral coat proteins. Many researchers have speculated that TNF-alpha is a key contributor to insulin resistance because it has three important functions. Normal adipocytes are able to synthesize specific proteins that allow it to store fatty acids like triglycerides when a signal reaches the nuclear receptor. Lipoprotein lipase, for example, is secreted from the adipocyte and acts on triglycerides in the neighboring regions, thereby forcing it to release free fatty acids. These free fatty acids are then transferred through the plasma membrane and into the cell by a fatty acid transport protein, where they are then converted back to triglycerides with the help of acetyl-CoA synthase. When the body needs to make use of triglycerides as a source of energy, TNF-alpha, produced internally by the cell, can stunt protein synthesis and decrease lipogenesis. Conversely, TNF-alpha has significant roles outside of the adipocyte cell as well. When adipose tissue is inundated with TNF-alpha being synthesized by macrophages, TNF-alpha is able to bind to one of its two receptors on the adipocyte cell membrane. This will produce a signal that will activate mitogen-activated protein kinases, thus leading to the decrease in transcription and synthesis of resulting proteins, ultimately promoting lipolysis. Understanding these two functions explains why TNF-alpha has been regarded as a pro-inflammatory protein. Because TNF-alpha decreases the intake while simultaneously promoting the release of free fatty acids, the adipose tissue is always in a state of chronic inflammation. The continual production of TNF-alpha exacerbates this phenomena. Nevertheless, the overproduction of TNF-alpha poses a far greater problem than simply the destruction of adipose tissue. The inundation of TNF-alpha leads to insulin resistance in adipose tissue through the serine phosphorylation of both the insulin receptor and the insulin receptor substrate 1. In order for glucose to enter cells from the bloodstream, insulin must first bind to its respective receptor and channel a cascade. The phosphorylation by TNF-alpha is a lethal mechanism because it impedes the insulin cascade in two consecutive places. Phosphorylation at the IR causes a conformational change that does not allow insulin to bind to the receptor, and phosphorylation of IRS1 hinders the stimulation of the next product in the cascade, phosphatidylinositol 3 kinase. This stops the cascade in its entirety. Because insulin is unable to promote the intake of glucose, there is a buildup of glucose in the bloodstream. This can lead to serious health complications, including diabetes. 
Developing a deeper understanding of TNF-alpha's mechanistic role in developing insulin resistance is an area of research that continues to spark the interest of many as the average modern diet continues to become even richer in carbohydrates and fats to compensate for the world's ever-growing population. Further research continues as a fight to combat obesity and diabetes.